I would like an introduction. When, I do. When, when it's, 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 it's line, it's like it's okay. I'll do. So, um, I'm familiar with your work, starting with The Walking Dead. Yeah. And to see you in that role, and to see you in the movie that you just uh, portrayed. Uh, are you um, individually the kind of person who is drawn to roles of that nature, the more dramatic and days, um, you know, ultra violent kind of scenarios? Is that kind of character? That yeah, I mean, as long as I can find reason. Almost in any, anything I do, I look for intention and and why. And and some of it shows up on the screen, but a lot of it doesn't. In, in but the preparation for the role is always the most exciting thing for me. I actually like um, what I call discovery, which is that deep dive into what it was like. What where did people like? this come from what was their upbringing I, I feel like no one inherently is is an ugly little boy or an ugly little girl you know like what, what is it? no one's born evil i mean type thing and how did they get turned around on that and so i try to figure out that reason and then that can carry me a long way into what i have to do or what i'm going to do as it goes and so that's what I like. I maybe don't like the act of violence. I, I, I typically don't care for violence in the least. It, it really bothers me. People say, well, what bothers you? Uh, human suffering. It bothers me to see a human hurt. It bothers me to see a human emotionally hurt. It bo that bothers me a lot. And but. That's part of the story. That's the vehicle part of the storytelling. Also, it is a, a job that you that you are requested and or required to do. And your job is to help tell the story, not tell the story, help tell the story. So that means it needs to find a marriage or, or it, it, it needs simpatico with the other storytellers. And that takes a while, I think, in experience for any performer who wants to land. You know, you want to be a great, uh, a great journalist. You want to be a great reporter. You're going you're to step out and shine, right? Yes. And occasionally, that's always that that's always in play. That that that's always good and cool. But occasionally, you gotta you will learn to to balance, you know, and you'll go oh. and you start to, to realize that. So I'm at a place in my career where I really recognize I'm a spoke in the wheel and what is what is it that I need to do? All those nights, all that deep dive, all that dig of, of, of learning of what the harshness of that terrain was um, and the anger that keeps the drive. You know, when you ride a horse, it is, perpetual movement and it's forward movement typically and so you have to be always kind of forward and forward thinking forward looking and so anything that blocks that forward movement is an affront it might be you it might be a fence it might be a big old cliff it might be a river <sighs> this is a problem but I'm gonna deal with it by going forward those guys didn't typically go around. And that's sort of what the, the law of the land was. And so that's the kind of study or technique that you, you start to do. The other thing for me is, and this is this is something I'm I'm curious about because we're we're starting new trends. So the old trope of the Western is great but we're blurring some of those lines or erasing them. Starting with things like Bridgerton, starting with things like Hamilton, not starting with, but those are really bringing uh, to the forefront our attention. And so the harder they fall, okay? Um, I want to say there's going to be, uh, I'm reading a lot of Western, a lot of this period, and it's being built more inclusive. Absolutely. So the idea, so for me, the most difficult part of that is a uh, what I call tone. 
So it's um, folks didn't speak fast back then. They didn't speak a lot, you know, sparse. Uh, they didn't. They didn't spit, you know. They didn't. And so I'm typically showing up in that essence when I come to work to do a Western. But those lines are starting to be erased. Those boundaries are changing. Or we're, we're, our, our palettes as an audience are accepting, hey, he talks pretty fast. He dropped an LOL in then on that cowboy speak, you know, or, or, or and it was okay. You know, it was, it was all right. And uh, they don't all have to have a uh, banjo in the background. You know, they used to Billie Eilish song. And so I'm observing that and going, okay, well, maybe I should get up to speed. Or if I'm going to be aware, it's probably a trend and it might serve me because when everyone else is on board, then the guy that's like, you know, you, 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 that guy, he, you stand out like a sore thumb, you know? So uh, those are just little things. I think that with uh, career experience, you, you start to focus on more than um, the lines on the page. So when you become a character, you talked about you show up on set and you want to embody the different things that you study, the different character developments that, yeah. you, that you come uh, to know. How do you separate Lou, the person, from the character that you portray for a certain amount of time? Yeah, that's a great, that's a great question because there are times, typically when you play a character like this, that, that isn't, that's, doesn't have what we might call moral compass, code, or or behavior for sure. Uh, they're not. That's not something you want to go out and visit with people. You know, meet. That's not your best foot forward, is it? Uh, nice to meet you. I'll probably kill you later. Just because you're in my way, you're in the way of my horse. So I just soon shoot you, and you're not going to live out here anyway. I can tell. But so that's kind of the type of peoples they were. So I need to. Uh, disconnect and decompress by um, uh, uh, removing the trigger. So I have a trigger that gets me into that place. It could be one of the lines in the script. Uh, on that, you could be sure. That that line in this movie, the assurance of this guy, the confidence, the awareness, the, the spiritual woo-woo voodoo thing going on, that got me there. Then I need to leave that in the trailer and I start doing that when the wardrobe starts coming off. And so it, one of the things that's really oddly and hygienic, I don't know if it's, uh, when you put away your clothes, you, that, that's just good, good cleanliness. But so I hang my clothes up. I hang my clothes up on the hangers they came and I pick them and I take them and I walk them back to where they came from. Typically, you can leave your clothes in the trailer. Some actors leave them in a pile on the floor. They're gonna get washed anyway, right? But someone's gonna come in and pick them up. But if someone does that, they're putting that guy away. And it's my job to put Jack Donner away that night because that's why, that means that Lou's in charge. And, and I have to let that go. I gotta go home and, and see my daughter and be a good person and be dad. I got to go home and see my wife and be a good person and be a husband and a family person. I have to be a good citizen and that what I'm doing over uh, for the day's J-O-B. Uh, I, I need to be able to, to disconnect. Now, I think when you get into a headspace that is difficult, you know, like you're dealing with difficult things. Um, it, it takes a lot of energy to get there and it takes a lot of energy to, so the fatigue of that effort is, is real. You, you know, we heard Isaiah Washington talking about physically embodying things can make you sick and they, we hear that all the time. So I think it's important to have a process and, and triggers to, to release it, you know, and, and that will 
uh, get that person out of your system. But so I know friends that I work with that are like, uh, have a really difficult time. The most difficult time necessarily isn't the day. Because I know when I put Jack Donner away today, I'm going to come back and put him on tomorrow. It's when it's wrapped and he's never coming back, Jack, other than when it comes in the screen. And then there's a little part of you that's like, I birthed, I, that's a little child that I made. And I wonder if I'm going to miss, I, I, I miss him because there was something that I became very attached to. So that's probably for me more difficult on wrap when the movie's over than day to day. Mm. Um, last question for you. You have been on television series and you've been on the big screen. Yeah. What is the difference for you when you're watching yourself work in both scenarios? What is that difference in the way you feel? Interesting, good question as a matter of fact. Uh, I find in television the nuance is The subtle nuance is the thing. And in a film, you only, you've got 90 minutes, let's say, and all of it's important. Every, hmm, yeah, I know what you mean. Every one of those, but in television, huh, I know what you mean, yeah. You're just throwing all that away. So, that, because you, you, you got four months of that guy and four months to land that character and you're just, you're continually planting seeds for the writers to go, hey, you know, that uh, Lou's character, Axel, um, he, he, uh, he, he likes to be cordial. He likes friends. He likes to, you know, and, and uh, maybe he is trustworthy and you have a lot longer. So I recognize my work in television is maybe less pressure. So it's sort of like the season and then the film is like the playoffs. And if you lose like up there, uh, uh, because it's like that horse, it keeps moving. But the binge of, uh, of a, a streaming series or a television show, I think has some grace to it and it isn't so much pressure. And I think people are like, well, acting is acting and I agree except to that point. Uh, and I, I feel like we're all a little different. You know, I know that this scene, I know what it's taken, I know it's costing. And I know that we're not coming back tomorrow to do this, but oftentimes in television, we're not redoing the scene, but we're kind of doing the same character, right? And so I guess, I, I, I guess that is a big difference to me. And the writing's different, you know, the television writing, Actually, it's really good. It's very cinematic now. I don't have to tell you. You, you watch. It's, you know, it's, it's really great. Yeah. Yeah, good writing always sings. So I, I think that, um, I think that, and bad writing also is hard to sing. I, I, I call it singing, you know, like lines, you know, that sings well. It's this thing. Nobody talks like this. This, you know. So are you able to take a bad piece of writing and out act what's on the page? Uh, uh, yes. Uh, no. <laughs> I was trying to be. Uh, so what I try to do is give it a little sprinkle, which might be a little improv, a little ab. Maybe I'll switch some things. Maybe I'll give it a little my my spice. You know, this could use a little cayenne. I'm gonna sure. Heat this up a little when bit. You are from New Orleans. Yeah. <laughs> this yeah. Use a little, uh, you know, a little old bay. Nice. You know, this could still be. Uh, but unless there's a writer that's like, no, this is how I wrote it for a reason, and the intention is clear. And if I'm, if someone calls me out on that, I'm gonna listen for sure. And then I'm gonna make it sing well with a very important acting tool which is your voice you ever hear those people that can just say anything and it sounds great yes i mean mr jones james earl jones for instance morgan freeman for instance tom uh, uh sam elliott is kind of got a great boy i mean they're so or it, it, iconic voices right and they could they got a way there's people sometimes that just i think denzel has a flow in a way i've had the good fortune to work with denzel washington uh, and have learned 
more than I'll ever know. I mean, that's, you know, for me, like he's my hero in my industry. And I, I've been I, I've been in the ring with him and it's awesome. It's yeah. amazing. And so, uh, yeah, sometimes you just take some bad writing and you give it a little bounce. Yeah, just, you know, all right, all right. Right. You know, how Mel Conaghy does it, yes. it just sounds great. And so I might do that with some bad writing. Okay. That's very arrogant of me to say that a bad write is something that's written poorly. It's maybe less that and more that it's not written from my tongue. My tongue doesn't sing it. Well, you might could, you might could. And I recognize that because we'll, we'll, I'll see someone say something, I'll go, dang. I can't say, I can't land it with any truth. And you just said it and it was perfect. How'd you do that? Dude? You know, it's just people's vibe, their essence. Yeah. Get back. You feel it? He's coming. Can I kill him now? Who are you? Bass Reeves.